Howdy, this is Dr. Stacy Lyle. This is a quick video about a Lab 7 where we're going to talk about the right of way and water land rights. So, in this uh, assignment what we're going to do is go in and build a couple of maps in ArcGIS Online and we're going to look at the right-of-way. Uh, we're going to look specifically in the state of Texas and the right-of-way is a boundary if you will. All pieces of property touch some right-of-way because land cannot be landlocked. In other words it has to have access to a right-of-way and the governing body determines where their right-of-ways are. In the state of Texas it would be the Texas Department of Transportation, Colorado, Colorado Department of Transportation, Oklahoma, so forth and so on. But each of those have where they think their piece of property is. Now, the best way to determine where they are at is to probably connect directly to their GIS records of where their location is. And I'll show you this as we go on. Navigable streams also exist throughout the United States. Navigable is saying that the stream is flowing. The beds of that stream is owned by that state. Uh, the state of Texas obviously have a navigable law saying who owns it, but we're going to look at some determinations from that. To improve the labs, I've gone through and I've made activities from either we're doing loading data, making maps, investigating, uh, so forth and so on, and then what we're going to do, all right? I also wanted to put a value proposition of why are we doing this or who cares. The big portion is that we understand that the Department of Transportation either owns the right-of-way by a fee or they have an easement of the right-of-way by dedication to the public. They maintain the records. They are the owners of that piece of property. They should know where their locations are. If you are bordering them, they are your adjoiners and you must know where they're at. In terms of the General Land Office and the Bureau of Land Management, they maintain the streams. There are minerals underneath these streams that you might be going after and you need to know where they're at. When the stream bed moves, the property moves. So we have to understand what takes place there in terms of the mineral rights moving from the state's opinions of where they're at. So when doing either the DOT or to the General Land Office, why you want to do this is you want to connect to their ownership versus having to go read a bunch of documents to try to determine that. How do you make those connections? Okay, so in the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the GIS for the Department of Transportation. So here you hit the GIS for the Department of Transportation and here's all these real-time data feeds that you can get or download the data. I'm specifically interested in the right-of-way so I'll click on the right-of-way. I'm also looking at the federal system. I can either download it as a spreadsheet, KML, shapefile, or a file geodatabase. All right, or if I click on the uh, data set there, it'll give me these APIs. These APIs are real-time connections, all right, that I can use. JSON, if you're probably familiar with that, if you're in uh, the programming course right now. Uh, but here I'm going to get the Geo Services, also called REST Services. It says press Control c to copy, so I'm going to copy that and then go paste that up here into a data set. Now what this is actually doing is running a query. I don't really need the query, I want to get to the data. So if I roll back to here, I actually can get to the data set, which is this data set here, okay? And I can copy this uh, uh, site and paste this in my map. So if I go here, I add a map, and now I want to make sure that I copied this REST services, all right? And I want to copy those and add those as a web connection here. And when I do this, it will directly connect to text.server 
and bring those over from that standpoint. So you'll do that in the exercise. Also, one of the things I want you to do is to look at some work that I've done in the past. I've done a lot of work with TechStot. Uh, here, uh, years ago, I built a uh, TechStot solution with the Texas Department of Transportation all the way back in 2009, which was the GIS to manage their records. This is our report to the federal transportation of how we built our GIS. But in the state of Texas, what became important to this project is that us to understand that we have access rights, a parcel, we have mineral rights underneath that, we have water rights that's there, we might have a mineral lease that is on top of that that's in the right of way from that standpoint. So we have lots of different polygons in here or we have one polygon that has a lot of attributes from that scenario. Then we could get into the adjacent landowner and the Department of Transportation might not have rights in theirs except where maybe they have a drainage easement inside of there and so they have some easement that overlays. So we had to overcome how we built that in the database and put that together and ultimately we built a functioning older GIS type web interface that's out there. They've updated that to a newer one. Uh, we can go and look at the newer one from what we have here in my uh, connection. Uh, I built one uh, here recently last year for State Highway 352. I want you to go and take a look at that. And what this is doing is that it's basically reading my CAD drawing in real time where I determine as the land server where the actual boundary goes right into their GIS. So if I go into there and I look at state rate 352, you'll see the legal determination to the centimeter accuracy of where that's at. So if you had a land parcel here right beside that and you think your parcel is good, you should bring in this data set so you can see that from that element and be able to know where that's at. So I wanted to share that with you as well. Now, once you do the land portion of the right of way, and I'll let you go through the rest of the lab for that, we're gonna look at the waterways for the uh, leases of navigable stream. This is in Brazos County here in uh, College Station, the county we're at, and we can see several different locations where that property of that navigable stream is, okay? So the landowners, are they here or are they there? So what we do here is that the state of Texas with the general land office, they don't have a real-time feed, but they have the data as a shapefile and you can see that from that standpoint. But not only do I want you to look at that, but I also want you to look at the scan documents of the lease agreements and go through and look at those documents and from there we want to be able to look at where they think those properties are at. So here's that whole file for that project and if we go down through here we'll see a map basically showing where they think that navigable stream is. Here we can see a general location from the GIS element of where the general land office is and then we have here basically a uh, an agreement for the lease but attached to the agreement to the lease should be a legal description describing the piece of property here we go this is the legal description that we similarly wrote previously in our last exercise that described it and this is where Corey Shannon one of my former students uh, also worked for me at BP. He did a map showing where he thought that the Brazos River was and the locations and where the navigable stream is. So I want you to look at this, look at this record, understand where this is at, see how this came about, and understand where the navigable stream elements are taking place. All right, so that is what we're trying to achieve this week. And what I want you to do is to upload those, make some maps online, and try to generate where you think the tech stop map is. And also look at the history of where that location for that piece of property 
and through that document you can see it build kind of a story map to tell us how they came about thinking where that's at if you have any more questions give me a call at any time and good luck